Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I'm ready to practice. I don't know about you. So we're going to get into some things. And just as sort of a check in to like, hey, this is important. I want to make sure that you remember as you practice this entire time, I want you to focus on deep diaphragmatic breathing. Got me? In fact, I almost want you to think about this as just completely a breathing practice. Now, yeah, we're going to be moving too, but as the movement, or as I tell you to put your body in different positions, distracts you from your breath, your job is to keep coming back to it. So as you get familiar with what I'm saying, or as we settle into a pose and you feel like, okay, I I got this. Oh yeah, the breath. I'm talking about deep and slow, long as you possibly can. Now, I don't want you to bring in stress or too much pressure into your breathing. So I want you to, to do more than what you would naturally do if you weren't thinking about your breath, but at the same time, don't overdo it, okay? So just kind of play with that and let that focus of the breath, let that challenge of the breath, because it's not easy be the thing that sort of dials in the difficulty for you personally, okay? Now, if you forget about the breathing, it's okay. I still love you. Um, But that is the process, okay? So if you watch this video again or the next time you do this practice, that's what we're working on. That's the name of the game. So without further ado, let's bust it. Come on to your backs. Uh, Oh, you know what? Let me show you one thing here before we get started. Um, We'll be doing some low lunge, and we might be doing it with the hands down. And if you're really tight in the hips and the lower body, it might be really hard for you to to reach the ground. So if you have like uh, anything, some 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 textbooks that you can put your hands on. I've got you know some yoga blocks are here if you have those. Um, I find that like uh, actually like a full paper towel roll is actually sturdy enough. There are two of those to to use as props. So this is that. Low lunge with the hands down, like a surrendering low lunge, um, low lunge with that, or or low lunging cow where we look up, right? So we'll be doing a little bit of that. But we're also going to add a new pose called lizard, okay? And lizard is very close to low lunge uh, with the hands down. And you'll see in this low lunge with my hands down, I have one hand on either side of my foot, okay? Um, Lizard you're gonna walk this foot a little bit wider, got it? And you're gonna take the arm inside. So both hands come inside. All right, so this is lizard. Um, You can also come down to your elbows here. Now with lizard, whatever leg is forward, that's the elbow you wanna try to put down first, okay? easier to do at the other side, like kind of, you're kind of avoiding it if you're doing the other elbow, okay? So what you wanna do is that same elbow down, okay? And it's, you can, I'm a little tight, I'm not quite warmed up yet. So you can see how it's a bit of a challenge uh, for me. So I could even put that block or put something underneath my elbow or just you know not go to my elbows <laughs> if it's like intense enough. Because remember, this is a breathing practice. So if you challenge yourself so much and the sensation in your body is so intense that you're like, ah, you can't breathe. You can't breathe deep, you can't breathe slow, you can't be relaxed and focused. And that's one of the things we're really trying to develop, okay? So that's quick glimpse of lizard pose. Now you can come on your back and let's do it. Now, personally, I use that Ujjayi breathing technique, and if you can go back in uh, some of our previous lessons, you can review that if you need to, but it's essentially I'm using my nose to inhale and exhale. I'm also constricting my throat to make a bit of a sound. Um, not only am I making a sound that's going to really help my mind focus on my breath and keep me oriented with that deep diaphragmatic breathing, but it's also um, going to help me regulate it. So by constricting the glottis, I can uh, I can let less air in and out, and that helps me make the breath longer, okay? You don't need to get that exactly right now, but if you wanna start to play with that and work with that, that gets the JB approval. So, now, come on down. Because we wanna start grounded. 
I'm going to recommend you bend both knees, put your feet flat onto the ground, and let's put one hand on our heart and one hand on our belly. And either stare straight up at your ceiling or at a cloud in the sky or a tree above you. Or you can even close your eyes or let your eyelids be nice and heavy. And if you haven't already figured it out, I want you to start to deepen your breath. So without any movement, without any body sensation, just in a total supported, relaxed position, I want you to focus on taking that breath, which probably before this was totally unconscious, into the front of your mind, the depth of your belly. Remembering the inhale, you push the diaphragm down almost as if you were breathing into your stomach. The exhale, the diaphragm comes back up to the heart. So you can squeeze your belly in a little bit to help squeeze out every last drop of exhale. So you start to do that. Focus, listen to me in the distance. Because, right, if we're trying to make our breaths longer, if we can fully squeeze out that last little drop of exhale, it's going to give us more room to inhale, thereby making our inhales longer, consequently. So get on it. And I want you to just to count, slowly count how long your inhale and how long your exhale are. And even though you're listening to my voice, you know, you might have a computer, or your phone playing this, the really the, the focus is the internal process. And that's, that's why our breath is such a significant anchor. So about two to three more rounds Full breath. A full breath is one inhale and one exhale. And then open up your mouth and sigh it out a little bit. Give us a a little pressure out and go right back trying to use your nose if you can only if you need to use your mouth a little bit that's fine too coming in to thread the needle okay so i'm going to take my right ankle on top of my left thigh okay boom give you a couple 360 or 270 degree view of that um i'm going to take my uh hand in between my legs and grab onto what I call the lever leg, because this lever leg we're gonna pull in. And this typically will stretch out maybe like the outer hip, maybe the groin for some people in this um, foot that's coming across. I'm flexing my toes back to my knee just to engage my leg and to help stabilize the knee from twisting. Not a huge risk of injury in the knee here at all, but this is just a good habit to get into, being a little bit more active. If this is too much, of course, you can um, let the foot come down onto the ground and just push this right leg away a little bit. But eventually, I want you to try to grab onto this lever leg. You can get it behind the knee or in front of the knee. In front of the knee is probably going to be a little bit more challenging to reach. So don't hesitate. Oh, yeah. Breathe. Two more big cycles here. I want you to bring your awareness to your shoulders and relax them away from your neck and your ears. And just shake your head 
to the right and to the left, taking out any tension in the neck. All right, now check this out. Don't change your legs. Keep the legs the way they are, but release your hands and put that left foot down. Okay, now keeping the legs the way they are, you're just gonna let them drop over to the right. So now my right foot ends up being a weight onto my left knee and I'm gonna extend my left arm for a twist. Maybe you take your arm up alongside your ear or anywhere in between. Oh yeah, breathe. Now, in particular on a twist, we really wanna emphasize the exhale. All right, so really work on that idea of squeezing the belly in and almost taking it up toward the heart um, as you finish the exhale to really kind of squeeze out and ring out in this twist. One more breath here. And you're gonna finish your exhale if you're still working on that. Don't rush it just because I'm moving on. But what we're going to do is we're going to start to come back and go to the second side. So you know what we're going to do. You don't need to look at what I'm doing because you just felt it in your body. Trust that. Coming to the left side. So my left ankle is now on top of the <clears throat> right thigh. And here we go. I'm going to choose my own adventure here. So some of us super tight. Hey, hang out here for a bit. If you feel sensation, that's what, you know something's happening, okay? So you can, that's maybe trying to distract you. Your breath is where it's at, trying to keep you anchored and focused. Once that sensation starts to fade or it becomes so distant that it's not even really a thing, okay, now we pick the right foot up. We thread the left hand in between the legs to grab on behind the knee or in front of the knee. Relax the head and shoulders down. Thread the needle pose. Now, I will say this has many different names. So if you go to different studios or different teachers, they might call it other things. Um, reclining figure four pose, pigeon on the back. Um, I like to call it thread the needle. Again, shoulders away from the neck and the ears and just rock the head a little bit right, a little bit left. Trying to relax the face as you, if you know what I'm going to say, breathe deeply, consciously. Again, I'm flexing my toes back toward my knees. I just kind of demoed it right there. Uh, stabilizing. And of course, you can sort of go a little bit deeper as your body can handle, as your breath can handle. About another breath or two here. Try to make it a little bit longer, a little bit slower, a little bit deeper. If you remember what comes next, you can slowly make your way there. We're gonna release the hands. Right foot comes down. Again, legs stay exactly the same. And then you drop the legs over to the left. So now this left foot, this left ankle becomes a weight on top of that right knee to help you twist and extend your right arm out to the side up alongside the ear or any point in between. And if you're feeling it, like you can even like do this little, like kind of like a wing flap, taking it up on the inhale, maybe taking it down on the exhale. You can keep it stagnant in one place. So I just want to invite you to explore and to play a little bit with this. Um, as long as you have that breath there, um, it's your body, it's your practice. I, I want you to start to make it your own. One more deep breath in this twist. A 
finish the exhale. That's when you come out. So if you're in the middle of an inhale right now, you stay where you're at. Wait for your exhale to finish. Don't be in a rush. We'll be here for you. All right. We're going to rock and roll ourselves a little bit. So this feels okay on your spine. Just going to rock and roll, get a little momentum, sit up, and then put your hands down. And we're going to come into a little, just a cat and cow. So cow pose is when we look up, we drop our belly down, face looks up, shoulders roll away from the neck and the ears. Cow, a little, wow, that was a terrible move, but you get where I'm coming from. <laughs> Exhale is cat. So you bring your chin into your chest, that tailbone tucks underneath, and you round your back like a Halloween cat. That was a little bit better of an animal sound. Back and forth two or three times here. So the inhale, you're going to look up. Now, weirdly, my, the arches of my feet are kind of cramping a little bit. So I'm actually going to tuck my toes underneath to prevent that. So if that's happening, you can either one, if you want to point the toes or tuck them underneath, totally up to you. But try to coordinate this movement with the breath. The inhale is when we look up. The rib cage expands. Cow pose. Exhale. Push the ground away. Pull your belly up into your spine. Chin into the chest. All right. Now we're going to move into downward facing dog. Hopefully you all remember this, or if you've forgotten, that's okay. Keep that tailbone lifting up. So your pelvis is tilted forward. Okay, and it's an anterior tilt, and that's going to take your tailbone up to the sky. From here, we're going to um, tuck the toes underneath and lift the knees up off the ground. All right, now this isn't downward facing dog, but I'm going to just move toward that direction. I'm going to use my hands, I'm going to push my chest through my arms as the tailbone lifts up. And you'll notice my knees are still really bent here. Okay, so this is going to help me keep that tailbone lifting up keep that forward tilt of my pelvis. If you can, start to straighten your knees a little bit. But if you feel like you're losing that tailbone up and back to the sky, bend the knees, tilt it back. In fact, everyone do that, whether you need to or not. Bend your knees quite a bit and take that tailbone up and back to the sky. Keep that feeling in the tailbone and maybe try to straighten the knees a half of an inch or maybe more. Now, if your heels are up off the ground, that's great. If your heels are all the way down onto the floor, wow, great work. Doesn't really matter. Are you breathing? Are you staying calm and focused? Is your mind here and now? That's the crucial thing, okay? Don't praise yourself. Don't judge yourself. Don't be hard on yourself. Just watch and breathe. Here we go. One more breath in downward facing dog. All right. Now inhale and shift into a plank pose. That's top of a push up. So in yoga, top of a push up is called plank. I know in like kind of the fitness world, plank is on your forearms. But we're going to hold this top of a push up position, build a little bit of heat in our shoulders perhaps. But I want you to pull that belly up into the spine a little bit so you're not sagging down. But you're not also pulling your butt up either. Nice flat plank. Shoulders away from the neck and the ears. Pretend like your hands are squeezing in towards one another. They're not going to move. Your body weight's on them. Keep breathing. Stay where you're at. Stay in plank. I know I'm not in it. I'm there with you, though, mentally, supportively. I, you're doing amazing. One more deep breath in, plank pose, top of a push-up. And then on an exhale, bend those knees, ride it back to downward facing dog. Just one inhale here. And then exhale, come forward. Now we're going to come on down. Come down as slow as you can until you come all the way down to the floor. Cobra, all right? Now, Cobra, we are going to really use our upper back to lift us, okay? So, need to peek up here. We're going to roll the shoulders up to the ears. That's just going to lift us a little bit. We don't want to keep them there. That's just the first step. 
shoulder blades then squeeze together, that's going to help keep the elbows to the side of you like a grasshopper. And then drag your shoulders down your back for a little bit more lift. This is cobra pose. Inhale. Sorry. Um, exhale. Lower down. So sorry about the breath screw up there. Hang out here for a second. Your next inhale, you're going to come up into cobra. Here we go. When it happens for you, shoulders shrug up, shoulders squeeze together, and drag down the back for that shoulder loop. Exhale, forward to go down, forward to go down, forward to go down. Once more, please. Inhale, forward. Start the lift. Shoulder blades pull back, and then shoulders down the back. Exhale. Back to downward facing dog. One big inhale here. Push that tailbone back. Feel into the backs of the legs. And then exhale. Walk the feet all the way forward to the front. And you're going to hang out in sort of like a forward fold position. So bend your knees considerably here. Bring that chin into the chest. Try to get back into your breath. Can you breathe the same way when you were just on your back chilling in this position? Not as easy. <laughs> You're not a good or bad person. You're not good or bad at yoga if you can or can't do it. This is just the attempt. This is where we're going. This is our, we're trying for. All right, now start to straighten those knees a little bit maybe. See how that feels. You're still struggling with the breath. Keep them bent. Be easy with yourself. And then keep your chin into your chest. A little one vertebrae at a time all the way up. And then shake it out a little bit. Yeah, have some fun. Just go ahead. Bounce a little bit. Shake it out. All right. So now we're going to move a little bit. We're going to get in. We're going to review a little sun salutation A. And then I'm going to pepper sun salutation A with some low lunge, a little bit of lizard, and we might even do some high lunge if you're lucky. Here we go. If you're on a mat, if you're on a rug, it doesn't really matter. If, you have, if you're on a rug, make sure your socks are off. Here we go. You maybe already figured that out when we were in downward facing dog. Mountain pose. So feet about hip width apart, a little bit of bend in the knees. And I want you to think about like growing roots down into the earth, like a thousand feet, just feeling that downward. And then with the crown of your head, lifting upward. So a little bit of opposing action here in this mountain pose. I like to keep a little bend in my knee here. Helps me feel really solid and gives me that sort of mountain quality unshakable, unmovable. When your next inhale comes, send the arms way out to the side. Like I'm talking about really reach them out, out, out first. Like I can already feel a stretch in my shoulders when I'm doing this. And then I take them all the way up overhead. Now, as I do this, my shoulders pull away from my neck and my ears. I continue to reach my fingers up. Stay here in this position. Keep breathing. Fingers reach up. Shoulders pull down. Feet still a thousand miles down toward the center of the earth. When the next exhale hits you, you are going to bend those knees and swan dive like you're jumping off of a cliff forward as you go down. Forward as you go down, chin all the way into the chest as you finish your exhale. Inhale, float halfway up. We're going to hang out here for a moment. This half fold position is a little bit technical. All right, so hands probably either just above your knees or below your knees for most of us. <clears throat> Some people who are really flexible in their hamstrings can actually keep the fingertips down. But don't put your fingertips on the floor unless you can do what I'm about to show you. And that's work our shoulder loop. So the shoulders up toward the ears, shoulder blades pull together, and then down the back. 
Now, as that happens, I'm going to take the crown of my head forward. So I'm like really trying to lengthen my spine here. Now, a lot of people sit back into their heels. I'm kind of demonstrating that right now, if you want to take a peek. And we want the weight forward in the toes, okay? So this is half fold. You can notice my back's not all rounded. You really have to work the shoulders and work the spine long in this to open up the back of the legs. Let's hold this here for one full inhale and exhale now. I know you've been here for a while, but I really now want to just focus on the breath with our alignment all set up. When you finish the exhale, go ahead, bend your knees, hands come down, full feet step back, plank pose. Take an inhale here. Long one. Slow, deep, focused. Exhale slowly. Now, this low plank position, if you remember, we're going to hover just above the ground. Heart hits first, belly hits second. Of course, you can use your knees to support that, make it a little bit easier on your upper body. Inhale, shoulder loop. Remember, our shoulders and our upper back are what take us into cobra. So many people in this pose just straighten their arms and their shoulders are all jacked up. This does nothing. It's a pet peeve of mine. So back it up. Keep it low. Elbows bent. Use the upper back. And then I'll see you in downward facing dog. Now, in this downward facing dog, I want you to have a look at your hands. Make sure one isn't further forward than the other. Something like that. Make sure the fingers aren't turned way out. Now, if they're turned out a little bit, that's okay. <clears throat> you either want your pointer finger or your middle finger pointing straight forward and parallel. So in my case, my pointer fingers are parallel. Same thing with my feet. I don't want them turned in or turned out, making sure one isn't further forward than the other. So just kind of be really aware of these simple, basic aspects of your anatomy to help support your mindfulness. This is what's happening right now. Not anything you're doing later, not something that happened earlier today. This is what's happening right now. My hands are on the ground. They're spread. My breath is deep. My tailbone's up and back to the sky. One more long inhalation and exhalation in downward facing dog. Now, time your next exhale. So when you finish the exhale, your feet meet your hands. You just walk them on up there. So usually you kind of start that journey about halfway into your exhale and hang out here for a moment. When the inhale comes, we're going to go back to that half fold. Hands slide up the legs, work the shoulders, spine long, and then forward fold. Chin all the way into the chest, bending your knees as much as you have to. But if you're not getting that sensation, start to straighten up. Inhale, arms all the way up and overhead. Big scoop to the sky, shoulders away from the ears. And exhale, bring the hands down. Pause for a moment, one hand on the heart, one hand on the belly. Close your eyes, soften the eyes, fix your gaze on one point, whatever you prefer. Notice the beating of your heart, your temperature. Focusing on this internal experience. Let's go through that one more time. This time we won't hold or repeat anything. We'll kind of do it in more of sort of a, a graceful flow. So if you're familiar with it, you don't even have to listen to me or stay with me. Start to create a dance for yourself. Fluid movements. You know where you're going next. How can you get there creatively, beautifully, gracefully for yourself? Shall we? <laughs> well, then let's. Inhale, arms all the way up. Reach out and up. Accentuate the movements. Bend the knees, perhaps. Fall in to forward fold. Inhale, float halfway. 
Work those shoulders. Take that round out of your back. Tilt the weight forward into the toes. Exhale. Bend the knees. Hands come down. Step both feet back. Take an inhale here. If you know you need your knees for support, that's fine. Just make sure you create that ramp with your body. So you're on an angle. Your butt's not hanging out back here. Exhale, lower. Halfway, hover. Oh, resist the ground. Oh, ground, you're so close. Don't flop it out now. Gently kiss the ground with your heart first, belly second. Point your toes. Inhale, using the upper back for cobra. And then exhale back to downward facing dog. And we'll be here for three inhales, three exhales. You can take a look at your hands and feet on your first breath. On your second breath, you can really focus on that pelvis. Make sure the tailbone is tilting up to the sky, bending your knees if you need to. And on that third breath, just feel it. Focus your awareness, deep diaphragmatic action, calm as best you can. Finishing the exhale by walking the feet forward. On the inhale, float halfway up. Take the round out of the back. Exhale, dive a little bit deeper. Chin all the way to the chest. Inhale, maybe soften those knees a little bit to support the back. So you come all the way up, looking at the hands. And then exhale, bring it right down through your center. Just pause at your heart for a second. Again, checking in. So now we're going to add a little bit to the sun salutation A. Low lunge, lizard, before cobra and downward facing dog. Low lunge and high lunge after downward facing dog. You don't have to memorize that. Just prepping you of what's to come. Experience it in the now. Here we go. Inhale, arms all the way up and overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Very familiar place. Use that breath as your challenge. Deepen it. Slow it down. Inhale, halfway up. All right. Now here, instead of stepping back to plank, we're going to infuse low lunge and lizard. So bend your knees. Hands come down. Step your right foot back and set that right knee down. Now, if your right knee is sensitive or if it's not feeling great, you can pad it up. If you have a yoga mat, you can kind of fold it in half and sort of, you know, double it up like that. Uh, if you want to pause the video and get yourself a blanket, like, you know, or maybe like a pillow, like a small pillow, nothing too big. You don't want like a giant, you know, couch cushion or something like that, but that can kind of feel, make things feel nice. Okay, if you got that, you just unpaused. Welcome back, everyone else. Here we go. We're going to keep the hands down. We're going to surrender, okay? Now, I want you to slide that right knee back as far as you can while still being able to bend this knee right on top of the ankle, okay? So let me just kind of break this down really quickly. If your knee is too close, okay, if you're like this, you can bend way forward. See how my knee is past my ankle here? No, nah, it's not what we're looking for. So instead, I'm going to slide this knee back. Now I try to bend as far as I can forward, and it's right on top of my ankle. That's the sweet spot. It's also a challenging spot. <laughs> and like I said, this is going to be trying to distract you from your breath. Okay? You got this. Now I have my toes pointed back behind me. Again, my, my arches are cramping up a little bit today, so I'm going to keep them tucked under here. It's totally Okay. You can choose whichever works for you. Now, low lunging cow, keeping your hands down or on blocks or paper towel rolls or whatever. Start to do what we did earlier in cow. Shoulders pull back, look up. 
All right, let's build this up a little bit more. And now we're going to take both hands on top of the front thigh. We're going to draw the lower ribs in. That's going to help to lengthen our hip flexor, the psoas muscle. It begins with a P. What? Psoas? How does it? Trust me on this one. Inhale. Arms come all the way up. And here we are in our low lunge. I'm going to just turn for a moment in case you're confused. Just give you another angle here. Bam. If you're feeling wobbly, walk this foot over to the side a little bit. Get that railroad track action going. Now, don't move this knee, but try to drag it forward. Don't move it, but you're pushing it down and isometrically dragging it forward, bringing those lower ribs in. This can feel pretty intense. Back off if you need to. Oh, yeah. Breathe. Try to manage it with your breath. Now, here we go. We're going to come into lizard. So we're going to walk this front foot out to the side. We're going to pour the hands down so both hands are inside of the foot. All right. So walk this foot wherever you need to. You can even turn the toes out a little bit. What I, what I don't want you to do, though, is just kind of like flop into this. All right. S stay strong here. And again, if you're going to lower, whatever foot's forward, that's the elbow that goes down first. I can't quite make it there. Hips are a little tight. So I'm going to stay up here. You can have one elbow down, both elbows down, depending on your body, your experience. However, one of the things that I want everyone to focus on is this front big toe, push it down. Squeeze this hip in. Activate. Two more breaths here. Lizard pose. The beautiful thing about lizard pose is there's an easy, easy transition back to downward facing dog. Tuck the back toes underneath, lift the back knee up. I kind of call this high lizard. And then send the left foot back to downward facing dog. And like notice a difference in the, in the sides of your legs. Shift into plank for a moment, please. Knees down if you need to. Lower slowly. Low plank. Heart first, belly second. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. All right. So now we're going to stay on the same side. Okay, so we stepped our right foot back, had that right foot back. We're going to do the same thing because now we're just going to add a little low lunge and then high lunge instead of low lunge and lizard. So that means we're going to step our left foot forward. Okay, now this left foot needs to get all the way in between our hands. It might get stuck. It might get stuck here. Grab it. Yank it. You're in good shape. Set that right knee down. Inhale. Low lunge. Again, pushing that right knee down, dragging it forward. Adjust your stance as you need to. Walk that front foot forward. Little toe caterpillar move or toe heel it out to the side. And then put the hands down. Now, high lunge. There's a balancing act here. Okay, so stay focused. Don't look at me in the camera. Stay, look at something in front of you on the ground. Here we go. You can maybe watch me to begin if you're not quite sure. So back knees up. So here we go, moving to high lunge. I'm focusing on one thing on the ground. Keeping my eyes there. I'm gonna walk my hands under the front thigh. I'm gonna pause here. Gather. Eyes, stay focused. Maybe you stay here. Maybe hands onto the waist. Hands in front of your heart. Arms up overhead. High lunge. I'm going to turn and face the camera again so you can see it this way. Lower ribs in. Rib cage loop. Crown of the head lifts. Let's so bend that knee down a little bit toward the ground. Not all the way. Don't touch it. Just lower it in. See how that, woo, hey, breathe. Don't forget about that breath. And then go ahead, pour your hands all the way down. And step the back foot forward. 
wave your hips a little bit. Take your hands like you were drawing an infinity sign in the sand. And then release your head. Slowly roll on up. Bring the arms with you, please, all the way overhead. And exhale. All right, let's do the second side. So now you kind of know where we're going with this. Not that I want you to think in the future, but as we start to move, like you, you know kind of what's coming, hopefully, or your body feels it. So really, really great opportunity to get deeper into your breath, if you can. I got my padding down already. Here we go. Whew. Arrive in mountain. Thousand feet into the earth. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, pour down. Forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Get that round out of the back by working the shoulders, tilting the weight forward into the toes. Exhale, bend the knees, hands come down. Left foot steps way back. Left knee comes onto the ground. Surrender here. Just relax everything. And this is the time to set up your stance. So remember, if you can bend your front knee forward past your ankle, you got to scooch that knee back a little bit further or scooch the, foot, the front foot forward. One of the two that's going to accomplish the same thing. Coming into low lunging cow, shoulders pull back, heart looks up, face looks up, and then start to crawl yourself up off of the ground here. Lower ribs, draw in, that rib cage loop helps to lengthen the psoas muscle, arms up. Now, I don't know if you noticed there, but I pulled a quick little, little front foot shimmy out to the side because I was feeling a little bit off balance. So remember, you can always widen that foot a little bit, give you that stability. Try to drag that back knee forward without it moving anywhere. You can even drag the front foot down to the ground and back. That scissoring action, if you remember from our earlier lesson, lunges, and then pour the hands down as you walk that front foot out to the side, coming into lizard. Now, technically, I call this low lizard because the back knee is on the ground. And as I mentioned briefly earlier, if my back knee was off the ground, I call it high lizard. Oh, yeah. Breathe. Deeply. Slowly, calmly as you possibly can. Plug this big toe down, squeeze this hip in. If you're coming down to your elbows, you know which one to put down first. I know it's the harder one. And like, I'm not saying it because it's like the harder thing to do. I'm saying it because it, first of all, it keeps your anatomy more square, a little bit safer. Not that it's a huge risk, but it also tends to challenge you in a way that's going to take you away from your breath. And remember, that's kind of one of the things that's happening here. I'm going to try. All right, I can get this side down a little bit better. So it turns out that. This hip's maybe a little bit more open than the other one. And there's both elbows. So I'm taking note. Oh, this side I can do this today. So when I do this again tomorrow or another day, it might not be the same. I'm not attaching to it. I'm watching it. I'm being with it. Plant both hands down if they're not there already. Tuck the back toes underneath. Again, a brief moment in high lizard. And then send your right foot back to downward facing dog. 
Inhale, come into plank. Exhale, lower, halfway hover. And then gently kiss the ground. Cobra, last cobra here. Elbows stay bent alongside the body, grasshopper style. Downward facing dog. All right, so now slow lunge and high lunge as we finish this part. The right foot's gonna step forward. If it gets stuck, yank it in between the hands, all right? We don't wanna stop here, put the knee down. We've got this really narrow stance. So when you step forward, you bring it out to the side, replace the hand. Go ahead, drop the back knee down. Immediately inhale into your low lunge. We just got done setting this up, so hopefully you're pretty familiar with it. You can optimize it. And then exhale, hands come down. Back toes tuck underneath, back knee up off the ground. So here we are, we're in high lunge with the hands down. All right, eyes focus one place in front of you. Squeeze the legs, hands walk up onto the front thigh, pause, stare, focus, breathe. Now some of you, that back heel might wanna come down onto the ground to help you balance. No, 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 that's a different pose. Keep that back heel up. Inhale, arms to the sky. Rib cage loop, tuck it in. Bending into that front knee, lengthening the back leg. Not easy. Breathe with it, you got it. Lower your back knee like an inch above the ground. Keep lifting the crown of the head up. Go slowly, this can be a banger. And then pour those hands down, step the back foot forward, forward fold. Grab the back to your ankles, squeeze it in. And then inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, bring the arms down to the side. Let's cool this bad mama jamma down. So to get down to the floor, I want you to widen your feet. So I'm gonna move my, my blanket here. Turn your toes out a bit, yoga squat, all right? So start by lowering, knees pointing in the same direction as your second toe. Pause here, okay? So some of you, this might be kind of intense. You can breathe here. Some of you, come on, um, forearms onto the thighs, okay? Others can drop down almost into a full catcher squat. All right, now you might've tried that and your body started screaming at you. Like you could do it. It's gonna be really hard to breathe here and like focus on anything else. So back out, find a place that you can manage. Then consider with every exhale, maybe just going like 5% deeper. So we don't need to go all the way to the deepest, hardest place. And it's like, oh, I gotta get up. <sighs> Ease into it. If you're deep in this sort of uh, catcher squat, um, reach the crown of your head up, pull the shoulders back. And then place the hands back behind you. Gently sit on down. Whew. Cross your ankles. Nice, easy, seated position. Arm up and behind you. Opposite arm, opposite knee for a twist. Inhale, lifting up, getting length in the spine. Exhale, wring it out. And remember in twists, the exhale is really our focus. The inhale is tough, so we're gonna focus on that too. We really wanna accentuate the exhale. Let's do the other side. Hand comes behind you. You could even tent the hands like I'm doing here, that spider kind of style, or you can bring it flat up to you. 
or somewhere in between. Inhale, lift up, grow tall. So like back out of the twist a little bit to get that inhale. And then exhale. Take your leg straight out in front of you. Now, the tendency, when most people come into this position, their back rounds, their tailbone's tucked underneath. So this is what we need to do. Everyone lean forward a little bit, so your shoulders are forward, and now start to like wiggle your butt back behind you. So get that tailbone out from underneath. You can even take your hands and physically like move the flesh out to the side. And you can maybe feel that tailbone plugging down into the ground rather than sneaking underneath you. And that's really, really helpful in this. Of course, you could bend your knees if you're super duper tight, absolutely. And we're gonna reach forward. Now, if you can't, grab onto your feet. Just grab on the outsides of your legs somewhere. And what I want you to do is similar to forward fold and half fold, all right? So we're gonna take three inhales, three exhales. The exhale, you try to deepen as much as you can, chin into the chest, crawl in there. On the inhale, you're actually gonna back out. You're gonna get length in your spine. You're gonna shoulder loop to create a nice supported back. When the inhale's done, exhale back in. Chin in the chest, the back round. Again, the inhale, back out. Length through the crown of the head. You know what to do from here. Pull your toes back toward your face if you're not already doing that. See how that changes the game. Bend your knees, feet come flat. Inhale, sweep the arms up overhead. And then exhale, bring them down to your side. When they get to about shoulder height, cut the arms forward, palms facing up. Slowly lower one vertebrae at a time. And keep the knees bent like we started class. Straighten the legs out. Come into... Shavasana, or corpse position, final relaxation. Arms oh, about six to eight inches from your sides of your body. Not crossing the ankles or anything like that. The, the feet are a little bit wider than hip width. The toes kind of pour out to the side. And I want you to feel here for a moment. Letting your effort settle in. Sensing aspects of your body that you maybe haven't noticed. Blood underneath your skin. Drop of sweat slowly traveling down your temple. Whatever it might be for you. Our lives are so dominated by external forces competing for our attention. Allow yourself the time to be with yourself. Getting to know yourself. Accepting yourself.
and loving yourself. You don't need to control your breath anymore. You can just let your jaw relax. Let your face relax. Let the breath just do its thing naturally without any control at this point. Just let yourself feel supported by the ground underneath you. The breath is here. Maybe you got the time, stay here a little bit longer. When you do get up, roll yourself into a fetal position on one side of the other, rather than jerking your head and neck up. So be slow with yourself. Pause in, on the side when you're in the fetal position, like take a breath there, maybe two breaths. And slowly push yourself back up into a seat. Bring your hands in front of your heart. Just gently bow your head a little bit. Take a moment. Give yourself some thanks. Putting together whatever effort you were able to muster here, whatever focus you were able to give. Take a moment to just like sort of thank the room that you're in for holding the space for you. Or if you're outside in a park or wherever you're at, just kind of thank the environment that you're in here. And then do your best to take whatever you learned about yourself, whether that was an insight into how your body feels, how your mind works. Take what you've accepted about yourself, your limitations, your strengths. And hopefully take a little bit of love for yourself as you go forward into today and beyond like that's the quality that's the true essence of it it's not what positions you can put your body into it's how you treat yourself how you treat others in this world that we live in and that's not easy to do but it's definitely worth it so go out there have fun, drink plenty of water, and I'll see you next time. Yeah? Peace. Thank you so much.